For decades, Republicans have been using a low road tactic that has helped them win elections. They have deliberately tried to make politics seem so frustrating and disgusting that a lot of people have opted to ignore that side of life when they can. The process has worked like a charm because it usually discouraged more Democrats than it did Republicans. It's no secret that Republicans have seemed to benefit from low turnouts for a long time. The elections of 2010 provided a good example of what I mean. Lots of liberals were so grossed out by the growling repetition of the Tea Party's rants, together with what they perceived as the Democrats' wimpy response, they simply ignored Election Day. Rather than cite a laundry list of other examples of how this style of gaming elections has worked over the years, usually to the advantage of the GOP, I'm going to point out that I sense a change in the air that stems from recent events. Over the summer, to protect the interests of America's wealthiest 1%, congressional Republicans threatened to push America into default, to renege on its debts. But that time, Representative Eric Cantor and his teammates overplayed their hands so egregiously, it became a tipping point. The GOP's unprecedented brinkmanship blew back into its face. Forget about the phony super committee. This time, the gross-out strategy helped launch the Occupy Wall Street phenomenon. With some good number of young American citizens returning to school this fall, it seemed they had lost their faith in governments at all levels. Of course, lots of factors caused the Occupy Wall Street, the 99% movement to materialize this fall. What happened in Egypt and in Wisconsin earlier this year surely played a part too. Now the seven-week-old movement has already changed the national conversation. A new, free-spirited force seems to be affecting the political landscape. My hunch is that this country's three decades long drift to the right ended abruptly on September 17th with the birth of this year's Occupy movement. Wishful thinking? Maybe. But my checks are changing political vernacular. Moreover, in a message aimed at Cantor and other cock-of-the-walk politicians who routinely do the 1% bidding, I'm saying this. The previously scheduled frog marching of the American culture, back to when it was okay to dump Keepone in the James River, back to before Democrats provided Americans their Social Security program, that forced march back to the Gilded Age, it has been canceled. Meanwhile, will the GOP's propaganda machine stop trying to hold down election turnouts using whatever means necessary? Of course they won't. Will that immoral, anti-worker, anti-student, anti-99% anti strategy keep working forever to serve the 1%? We'll see.